Gender Inequalities and Water Affordability in Kitui County. Good afternoon. I am going to make a presentation on the case of gender inequalities and water affordability in Kitui County. This presentation is derived from the ongoing study on gender analysis of vulnerability and resilience to household water insecurity in Kitui County, Kenya, and the implications it has for institution and policy response. This study is part of the broader REACH supported studies on improving water for the poor, as already indicated by Dr. Marina. The current study is concerned with access to water for life, i.e. the acquisition of small volumes of water for drinking, sanitation, and hygiene purposes within the households in Kitovoto and Kasaini in Kitui County. The study is significant considering the fact that universal access to water for life and livelihood is no less than a human rights issue. Thus, we underscore the fact that water is both politically and socially produced and used. Gender examined through the lenses of roles, responsibilities, and relations between men and women is found to be intimately connected to water access, including its attendant element of affordability. In this study, therefore, access is largely defined as both physical reach and economic affordability of water for domestic use by the various households in Kitui. On a broader level, consideration should be given to the existential power relations between women and men and their attendant determination of differential access to choices and resources between men and women and how these play out in water access. In Kitui County, women are found to have limited income given the infrequency of income-generating activities. Additionally, in the study area, most of the roles that require water, cleaning, drinking, cooking, and the farm work are within the women's jurisdiction, leaving them with little or no time to do anything productive outside the home. Men largely remain the sole income earners and are mostly dependent on non-permanent jobs and manual jobs that do not guarantee everyday income. The manual jobs include fencing, digging the shamba, building of houses, selling the shallow well water for the men who own such. These kinds of jobs tend to give the laborers a pay of 200 to 300 shillings per day on average. In the cases where women go for these casual jobs, all the money is used for the household needs. Some women reported getting an amount of 300 shillings, where 200 shillings is set aside to ensure that children get food and other necessities, and the 100 shillings set aside for paying water bills, whether at the borehole or at the private earth dams. This means that a vast number of these women depend on their husbands' meager incomes from casual jobs. When men leave money behind, it is meant to satisfy competing priorities, namely food, medical and clothing needs within the household. Given the limited amount left behind against thick expenditure lines, the women often opt for cheaper and open water sources, which are not only risky health-wise, but also time-consuming in terms of physical access. Further, such low income levels naturally prevent women from accessing water from the improved water sources, which charge between $0.04 per 20-liter jerry can to $0.03 respectively. The situation is more appalling in households where women are the breadwinners and depend on casual jobs, if not sales from surplus, subsistence production, to meet all the daily needs of the household members. Additionally, this regime of low income and weak spousal financing of water acquisition is compounded by lack of credit arrangements at the tariffed water sources. Unlike the unimproved water sources where one relies on social capital to acquire water, the pay-per-use system largely locks women without money from accessing water from improved sources. This then pushes the women and girls to walk long distances to get open and charged water sources, which often happen to be unhygienic, physically straining because of the distance, that also exposes them to certain risks and route to and from the water sources. Regular use of an improved water source comes out as a multidimensional measure of costs and attendant expendable income availability, opportunity costs and trade-offs in the hierarchy of needs, availability of credit facilities or their lack thereof and spousal support in household water financing. 
Moreover, the differential power in access and control over disposable household assets, including the use of expendable income in favor of men, has meant that women limit their choices of water sources to those they can get for free, despite the safety status. The nature of asset access control is largely in favor of men in Kitui County. Thus, market disposal of household resources, including poultry, which are presumably owned with inverted commas, by women cannot take place without the consent of the husband. This limits the amount of expendable income available to women over which they can make direct decisions on how much to spend on water, forcing them to go for unpriced water sources. The lack of direct decision making affects their accessibility to water as they may have the resource which cannot be utilized without the go ahead from the man and this, according to them, retards their performance. Most of the households that have access to adequate water, whether during the rainy season or the drought season, are when the negotiations of gender roles and responsibilities are more or less evenly distributed within the household. This is in the sense that men pay for water as required or dig their own shallow wells and women and children collect water. Extended dry seasons often lead to water scarcity. As a result, households already affected by poverty, diminished food production, and limited income generating activities are made even more vulnerable. Water prices at the shallow wells and private earth dams normally rise by 10 times during the dry season, with a 20 liter jerry can selling water at 50 shillings or $0.5, albeit this varies within with whether the drought in question is deemed short or long. Such diminished water sources and associated high costs mean that women will walk long distances to get water for their domestic use, where it is free even when such sources are unsafe and physically straining to access. Additionally, women struggle to satisfy household members' water needs might mean sacrificing their own hygiene needs with long-term health consequences. Essentially, priced water from improved sources, gender division of labor in water-related tasks and routes, combine to perpetuate gender inequality in water access. It is important to understand that droughts have confounded the water insecurity problem by not only heightening the costs of water acquisition, but also in increasing the distances to the closest water sources. Therefore, the drought element alongside prized water sources are important variables in the gender and water access debate. Furthermore, most family members are found to depend on women's access to water to satisfy their needs. This might strain women from the point of health, but also in engaging in other productive activities. Provision of clean water close to their home needs to be aware of the gender differences in socioeconomic situations of various members of the community in order to realize the ultimate goal of a reduced workload for women and girls while also freeing their home for more engagement in productive activities. For a private earth dam, water is paid as you go. Agreeing with the owner of a private earth dam to scoop some salt from the dam as a form of payment for water if the woman doesn't have money. This in some situations is counted in form of buckets. Some people say that five buckets of soil can warrant you two to three jerry cans of water. Some owners measure three feet by two feet for the women to fetch water but do not count the number of jerry cans. Some women trade food for water based on the market price for that food at the moment. The common foods exchanged are millet, green grams and cow peas. If the market price at that particular time is 15 shillings per kilogram of millet or cowpeas or green grams, with an agreement between the two parties, food can be provided equivalent to the number of jerry cans of water required. The close relations and frequency of payment of water is another aspect that helps women in the pay-as-you-go water situation. If one is trusted and believed to pay their bills as required, then they can access water on credit until a time when they are able to pay. However, this practice is limited to certain specific dams and is largely influenced by the nature of trust. If the owner of the dam trusts you and you have been settling your payments as required and timely, then they can give you water on credit until you are able to pay. However, this is not something the dam owners encourage and thus does not happen that often. 
for the automated boreholes like Ikadima, in situations where a woman doesn't have money to feed the ATM card, she can request a neighbor, a friend, or a relative to use their prepaid card and give them the money later. In many situations, however, the money is not returned, but is expected that she will provide her card to her neighbor to use at her time of need, meaning that there is a mutual reciprocity. Thank you for listening to this presentation.